Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Tamkeen Saleem. I welcome you for the lecture for week 15 and the topic is habit disorders, smoking and drinking behavior. The main objectives for the present lecture are that students will be able to learn what are the habit disorders, what is smoking behavior, what are its causes and consequences, as well as what are the interventions available for smoking. Habit disorder is a term used to describe several related disorders linked by the presence of repetitive and relatively stable behaviors that seem to occur beyond the awareness of the person performing the behavior. For example, it may include procrastination behavior, nose picking, hair pulling, nail biting, substance abuse, overeating, and such other habits. However, the focus of today's lecture would be smoking and alcohol. So we define habit disorders as habit disorders are behaviors performed by individuals as a response to boredom, lack of sensory stimulation, or stress. These behaviors are repeated and these seem to drive people to carry them out. Behaviors begin to interfere with the normal everyday activities and in some cases these habits may also result in bodily injury or may result in social isolation. Specifically in some cases where the peer groups have their own influences. What causes the persistence of habit disorders? Uh, specifically, it is said that when there is inconsistent or contradictory parenting style, it may uh, cause stress that tend to trigger or uh, reinforce uh, such kind of habits that provide solace and coping to the people. Stress can also be brought on by the family or the marital problems in the home or the child abuse or child neglect or overindulgence and spoiling of the children. The, our focus is habit disorder, that is specifically smoking habit. Most commonly, it is uh, smoking of tobacco that is used, which is inhalation of smoke or burning tobacco that is used mostly in three forms, cigarettes, pipes, and cigars. Smoking tobacco is both a physical addiction and a psychological habit. Thus, eliminating that requires uh, a lot of effort because of the reason there may be physical withdrawal symptoms and cravings felt by the individual who has to quit it. Many health experts uh, regarded habitual smoking as a psychological addiction one with serious health consequences. Through the process of respiration, oxygen is taken into the body and carbon dioxide is expelled from the body. This process draws deep air into the lungs, which routinely introduces a number of particles into the lungs, which may damage the lungs. The smoking provides a pathway for the lung damage and there may be a number of associated diseases that are there which may be cause of this smoking behavior. There are various compounds in smoke that are present which are dangerous for the body. The processed tobacco and cigarettes contain at least around 4,000 compounds and at least 60 of these are known to be carcinogen. One of the most common uh, agent that is present in uh, tobacco is nicotine, which is a stimulant pharmacological agent, which is responsible for addiction to cigarette smoking. Nicotine is an active ingredient in tobacco and is inhaled into the lungs, where most of it stays. The rest passes into the bloodstream, which reaches the brain in about 7 to 10 seconds and dispersing throughout the body in 20 seconds. And when we are referring to that it is uh, available or it is found in the brain seven seconds or 10 seconds after ingestion, it means that it is twice as fast as intravenous injection.
the half life of nicotine is 30 to 40 minutes due to which addicted really go more than that when we talk about that what is um, half life or when we use the term of half life we mean that um, the time taken for the plasma concentration of a drug to reduce to half its original value the half life is used to estimate that how long it takes a drug to be removed from the body When nicotine is delivered to the brain, it occupies the receptor sites and affects the release and metabolism of several neurotransmitters, including acetylcholine, epinephrine and norepinephrine, glutamate and do dopamine. The overall action is to increase the cortisol uh, arousal. In addition, smoking releases beta endorphins, which are the natural opiates present in the brain. Thus, it releases a pleasurable effect for an individual due to the release of such neurotransmitters. Another substance present in uh, the cigarettes is known as tar. Tars are the compounds which are uh, considered to be carcinogen. These are water-soluble residue of tobacco smoke condensed which contains a number of compounds identified or suspected as carcinogen. Another compound which is common is acrolein. But before we talk about acrolein, I would like to elaborate a bit about the TARS that um, you may have heard about that there are certain kind of uh, cigarettes which are low nicotine based. But when there is low nicotine, the tar is more present in the cigarette, which means that there is an increased rate of smoking uh, when people are taking low nicotine. There are more cigarettes that are taken up by the individual and usually people tend to take um, more deeper inhale. But when people take um, or inhale more deeply, they consume higher amounts of tars, which becomes hazardous for their health. Connecting back to acrolein and formal dehyde, which is a class of irritating compounds, that is aldehydes, it's a, also, again, carcinogen because it disrupts the tissue protein which brings about uh, damage to the cells of the lungs. Another compound is nitric oxide and hydrocyanic acid. These are the gases that are generated in smoked tobacco that affect the oxygen metabolism and therefore these could be dangerous because the tobacco companies do not provide the public with specific information about the content of the cigarettes the consumer may not be fully informed about the potential health risks posed by smoking usually what they uh, pretend or they uh, display in the advertisements is that those who are very adventurous those who are more muscular they are actually uh, indulgent in the behavior of smoking the, but that is just a tactic to sell the cigarettes by um, smoking industries or cigarette industries. Smokers differ from non-smokers in gender, ethnicity, age, occupation, education level and variety of other factors. Uh, men tend to smoke more in comparison to females. For ethnic groups, American Indians have highest rate of cigarette consumption and in comparison to um, others. Smoking prevalence is lowest for the people of age 65 and older. However, it is more common in. There are also uh, personal factors involved in smoking. Level of education is a good predictor of uh, smoking. Higher the level of education, the lower the rate of smoking. The question is that why do people smoke? People tend to begin 
smoking when they are uh, not aware regarding the hazards. Uh, they are uh, not aware about that what health problems it may bring upon. Similarly, there is also optimistic bias present in the people. That is, the danger does not apply. Even if they are aware about, if they are told by people that uh, it may lead to health consequences, they have this optimistic bias that I would not get ill. Many people might be getting uh, health hazards, but I would not. Then there are genetics as well, which are responsible, um, in which we see that there is genetic predisposition. Parents have been smoking and so the child continues. Social environment is also there in which there are two uh, major factors. That is, if father is smoking, generally it is observed that the son would also be smoking or the children would be smoking because uh, there might not be a control or monitoring on smoking behavior or it might not be perceived as a behavior that is an inappropriate thing. Social pressure is also there that maybe uh, the peers, uh, friends are smoking, so they uh, put on their peer pressure in order to make uh, the friend to indulge in the behavior of smoking. Advertising, there are more and more uh, advertisements which are very much attractively uh, made, which persuade the youngsters to indulge in uh, smoking and to experience the adventure. Cigarettes have a component of nicotine, which is basically responsible for increasing the um, met metabolism of the people, which tend to control the weight of the person. So that is why it is being uh, seen that people generally tend to indulge in smoking in order to control their weight. Those who continue to uh, smoke, they continue because they are addicted addicted to the substance of uh, tobacco or nicotine dependency is there and they continue because the optimistic bias continues to prevail so they do not stop smoking they continue to smoke and the third is the fear of weight gain because cigarette smoking is helping them to retain a particular weight and not gain a weight so they have this perception that if they would discontinue smoking they tend to uh, they might have uh, weight gain the health consequences may include heart diseases lung problems chronic lower respiratory diseases depression suicide common cold and cognitive problems health psychologists can guide the family and others in helping to increase the drinker's motivation to change. What he or she can do is assess the type as well as the degree of problem the alcoholic has experienced and then offering initial guidance to uh, the alcoholic about what treatment he or she can take and also motivate uh, the individual to get the treatment. Individuals with alcoholism improve their chances of recovery by seeking help early. The more it becomes a chronic problem or uh, there are more years of uh, indulging in that kind of behavior, the more difficult it becomes to quit it. Using one or more of several types of psychological therapies, a health psychologist can help an individual address psychological issues which are related with alcoholism. CBT is effective. Uh, treatment modality for uh, alcoholism. Similarly, motivational enhancement therapy can be used in which people are motivated in order to change their problem-based or problem-related behavior, which is uh, alcoholism. Similarly, additional therapies uh, like 12-step facilitation approach uh, that help people to quit drinking by indulging in self-help programs like Alcoholic Anonymous, that is double A. The therapies can help people to boost their motivation in order to stop drinking. They can also help uh, an individual to understand that what are the triggers for their drinking behavior, that is, uh, in which circumstances they tend to indulge in the behavior of smoking, uh, drinking. They also learn new methods to cope with the high risk drinking situations and how to refuse um, 
drinking behaviors or drinking offers and how to develop a social support system within their own communities and all this can eventually help to quit alcoholism.